Non, rien de rien. Non, je ne regrette rien. Hi, I'm Lauren. Lauren Ottiwell, XTC member, known as Lauren Hopo Medal. I run my own theatre company, Moving On Theatre, which is national and going international. I've been invited to go to the Edinburgh Fringe and Henley Fringe, and I'm performing the life story of Edith Piaf, Love Conquers All. And none of this, none of this would be happening if I hadn't been in the therapeutic community for nearly my life. Now, <laughs> I went in on the uh, November the uh, 5th, and I brought fireworks and I brought wars and I brought a lot of unhappiness and pain and suffering and screaming and crying and an awful, awful life of a lot of unhappiness because I was brought up in Israel and every time I came in, they said I was bringing in my guns and my bombs and I didn't even know I was fighting. I didn't even know I was fighting. But you see, that's what happens to us as children. We become a part of the environment and that's what happened to me. I grew up in wars, I grew up in terrorism. I was a very unhappy child who'd been hurt and abused. In the therapeutic community, they brought me to my knees, literally. They tried to get rid of me four times because I just couldn't get it. It was all about surrender. It, it, it's something I can't explain to you how it works, but it does. You get to a level where you're a child again. And I was bullied so much, but I know that it was, for, it was tough love and it's exactly what I needed. And I got to my knees and I surrendered. After they tried to get rid of me the fourth time, I went home that night and I cried and I said to my husband, I'm not going back, I don't wanna go back. And I had a memory recall of something that happened to me as a child and I forgave myself and that was it. I went back into the community a year, I'd been there a year, and I surrendered. I surrendered and I started to pray uh, spiritually. I'm not religious, I'm Jewish, but I'm not religious. But I started to pray, I started to realize that I needed to find inner peace. And I did. I did. Every day started to become a miracle. People started to change. I started to change, so people started to change. They said I never listened. I started to listen to everything. I saw myself in every single person there. I saw my pain, I saw my anger, and I started to connect to people again. Because I was like that little child again. You know, they talk about that in, in the teachings of Jesus, become like a child. And the miracles happened every single day. I learned to live again. I learned to focus. I learned to connect to people. I, my heart was, before that I had no heart. I was so narcissistic, all I thought about was me, 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 me. But then I started to think about others. I started to support other people. It was hard, it was hell, hell on earth. But I got through it. Every single day I went back, those three days a week I went back. And I'm asking you, there are so many of us out there that have had difficult childhoods. Some have been abused. It doesn't matter, but we can't survive in this world. We don't know how. When you go into the therapeutic community, you have a model of how the world is. You learn to surrender to the pain. You learn to let go and you learn to trust yourself. And when I came out, I came out with so much peace and love and I still have it. And it's more than two years since I left the TC. It's given back my life to me. I had counseling, I went everywhere, did everything, you name it, I did it. But in the community, I found inner peace and I found my life. I found theater and singing, la vie en rose. <laughs> I played the accordion again, which I didn't since the age of six, I started playing. I believe in God. I believe in a loving God. I believe I found what I needed in the tough love of every single soul in that community. I am grateful for the toughness and the bullying. I'm grateful for it. I forgave everyone. Doesn't it make My sense, guys? Smooth. My husband will put a video on here. Doesn't it make sense? I am. My friends. Listen to this, guys. I love my friends. I love the TC members. Everybody Listen to this woman saying.
Hey guys, I gotta stop this amazing song for a second because I gotta tell you what this is about. Um, this is Lauren Hope. You guys, uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm about to interview her in a minute here, but Lauren Hope um, came out with this song um, after the people uh, in 2002 in So uh, Soham. Uh, there was a big uh, massacre. Uh, there was. Uh, some really horrible things that went on and when Lauren comes on I'll uh, I'll get more information but just listen to her sing listen to her passion about this guys Hey guys, that's uh, right there, Lauren Hope, everybody, and um, in a minute, we're going to be lucky enough to be joined by Lauren Hope. Let me just check my levels right here. Um, Lauren Hope, you guys know, she is the founder of Moving On Theater. Um, you can get more information if you go to movingontheater.co.uk. Um, and guys, at this moment, it's my pleasure and honor to welcome my friend and uh, one of our great guest here at WMAP, back to the program, Miss Lauren Hope. Lauren, how are you today? Hi, Casey. <laughs> really happy to be here. Thank you so much. Can you hear me okay? Is listening. everything all right? I can hear you really well. I'm listening all the time to mm. your programs. Oh, Robert Kramer. I'm in love with all his music. <laughs> <laughs> you're so, thank you so much for introducing you, me. You're so cool because we we were um, we were talking before uh, before uh, you know we were about to go on, and Lauren was telling me uh, about some of the people that she was listening to that we had here on the station. She was talking about uh, um, Vernon uh, Vern uh, Weiss. Um, uh, the concentration camp survivor member, uh, remember him, Lauren? Yeah, that, unbelievable. Now you went, you know, you, you went through something friend. of your own that was almost like a concentration camp. You did something. Yeah. Tell me about it. Yeah. Well, just before that, you know, I grew up in Israel, and from the time I was about seven years old, we were taken to Yad Vashem, and we were shown the, the pictures of what happened to the Jews. You know, everything very descriptive and really in your face for such a small child. You know, I thought that was it was quite a lot to put a child through. But, uh, yeah, my personal Holocaust and what happened when I went into the therapeutic community. Um, it, it was such a difficult time for me. Um, but I believe that it was meant to happen. But the reason I say that is because when you go into the therapeutic community, you can only go in with the kind of person you are. So everyone who comes in with you all come in with their own issues. And we're all so different and we all have different belief systems. Mm -hmm. And I felt continuously attacked and bullied, not physically, but continuously, continuously attacked. By, by who? Um, the, the, the other people that were trying to get help or the staff? Uh, who, who do you mean? The people themselves, the staff oh, wow. weren't allowed to intervene. Wow. The people like myself um, that went into the community 
we all came in with our issues. We all came in with the things that we knew, all we knew. And all I knew how to do was fight. Right. But the thing was, all I knew, to, all I knew what to do was because I grew up in Israel in fighting, and I grew up in a very dysfunctional family with not, very little love and struggle and abuse. Not from my family, as I did say to you before. Uh, I was molested by the family dentist, so it wasn't yeah, nice. That, you know, um, that, 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 that's a horrible, horrible thing because um, yeah. you were yeah. you, you you know you did something so kind as to sing this awesome song. Can you hear me? Can you hear me sing? Um, and that yeah. that was about something that happened in two thousand two in Soham. Yes. Yeah, if we connect that, um, there was a terrible incident that happened in Soham at uh, the beginning of uh, 2000 and something. I think it was 2002. Um, two little girls uh, disappeared. And every the whole nation, the whole of the UK, were hoping that they would be found alive and safe. But they weren't. They were murdered by this pedophile who oh. was working at a school. Oh, yeah. Man. And, you know, at the bottom of mental illness, Everyone I've met who has mental illness has been sexually abused. Mm -hmm. Every single one of them. And they grow up with this Im total distorted image. I mean, how can you be normal after you've been molested or abused? That's impossible. It, it, th that's true, Lauren. It, that's totally true. But, you know... Uh, one thing that I do have to say is, is look, I, you know, I am, uh, uh, I like to think that I can um, understand people's sickness. I can understand, um, you know, uh, forgiveness and everything. But when you harm a child, um, I am not on board with that. And, um, you know, something that happened to you um, with a dentist, that is just unforgivable. Yeah. And um, it was. It, it, and I bet it shapes you for the rest of your life. Case. The thing is, Casey, that you carry that, and um, you don't realize what's really going on inside you. So, what happened to me in the therapeutic community is we all came together, all of us with our abuse and our negativity and our belief systems, which we were all so different. And for about a whole year, I felt like I felt like it was the worst. The worst thing I could have gone into, I, I kept thinking, what the hell am I doing here? It was a nightmare. <laughs> it I was thought, no fun. You weren't having fun to begin I with. I hated every second of it, but I knew in my heart, I knew I had to stay there. Right. I knew that if I could get through those 18 months, I would come out with something. I just knew. I knew that there was a reason. You know, all this pain and all this suffering and all this cruelty and people can be very, very cruel when they're struggling and everyone in there was struggling. We were all struggling with this serious condition and a lot of people had to come off their medication. So you've got to understand they will be weaned off their medication oh, because that's no fun. <laughs> allowed to have them. So, and I wasn't on any, I wasn't on any medication. Yeah. So that's incredible that you did in. that. So I went stuck in. I got stuck in, but I used to upset everybody because I was determined to get well. So the first thing, we had a bell. We had a bell. And you, every time you didn't feel very happy or you felt emotional, you'd ring the bell. And guess who rang the bell all day? <laughs> <laughs> every second I got was, help, help, help. <laughs> and they hated me. They hated me. But I tell you what, it really did the trick. I took all the space for my therapy. I was determined. I thought, I'm going in there and I'm doing everything I can to get well. And the only way I knew how to get well was by being myself, because that's all I knew. Mm -hmm. So um, I used to say something and everyone would run out crying. You know, I didn't even know what I was doing. I used to stir everything. Because, like I say, I came from Israel. I came from wars. I came from terrorism. I came from fighting. A background of my family were I I Irish Jews, <laughs> and everyone was always fighting and shouting <laughs> and screaming. <laughs> and that's all I knew, Casey. So you were just and telling your story. <laughs> you were just telling your I about your life. Sorry? You were just telling about your life, and and uh, some people couldn't handle it. I guess it upset some people. 
They couldn't handle anything about me, hmm. not a thing. And I mean, people, there was so much that went on in there that, um, um, but they tried to get rid of me because they didn't like me because I couldn't conform. I was so, I'm such an, I was such an independent person and I didn't know how to make friends. I don't have children and a lot of them had children, so I couldn't bond. So they tried to get rid of me. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why I like you so much, Lauren. And maybe it, it might be. <laughs> my, I'm so fond of you. Uh, maybe because of that, because um, you know, you you march to your own drum. You uh, you know, you do what you think is right, and uh, you, you know, you treat people with fairness. And a lot of other I people do. don't do that. I do, but when I went into the community, my my main um, trait with BPD is narcissism very very narcissistic all about me all about me i was the worst person in the world if someone had um, a headache i had a brain tumor you know everything has to be worse right and they hated me they hated me they really really hated me mm. and what happened was they tried to get rid of me about four times and miracle happened and they never managed to get rid of me out of the community because somehow something kept me there now the last Time they tried to get rid of me it was about a year into being in the community um i went home that night and i thought why does everyone hate me <laughs> i thought i don't understand it why would they try to get rid why of does me everyone hate me <laughs> what am i doing wrong casey what right am I doing wrong? all i was doing was being honest and saying what i felt and upsetting everybody yeah why, why, why would people get upset about that you're just be, you're, <laughs> you, you're nothing but pleasant Sorry, they used to say that when I come in, I bring the Israeli army. I throw all my guns and all my bombs. You know, and um, so they hated me. So anyway, that night I had um, a, a night terror, a really bad night terror. And I woke up and I grabbed hold of my husband and I said, don't let me go back. Don't let me go back. And that's when the miracle happened because I realized that I had told my parents, don't let me go back to the dentist. I said it. Now, the minute you tell your parents as a child you don't want to do something and they send you back, then it's them. Yeah. It's nothing to do with you. And it, it completely came off of me. And I got total 100% in a piece because I realized it wasn't my fault. Right. Nothing was my fault. Went back to the community next day and I said, you're going to see a big change in me. I'm just going to sit and listen. I'm not going to ring the bell anymore. I'm going to sit with my feelings. I'm going to listen. And I did. And little by little, people started to come and sit beside me. They said they could feel the peace around me. I started to use the Course in Miracles, which is the teachings of Jesus, um, which is all about love and compassion and realizing that every person in there that hurt me was hurting. Hmm. They were good teachers. They were very good teachers. Everybody was hurting. Me, Everybody was hurting in a different everyone way. Everyone was hurting. Yeah. And if they said to me, I'm going to tear your head off because I don't like you and scream and shout at me because I said you've got nice makeup on. <laughs> they couldn't talk to me. I'm serious. And I realized that I would come home and scream at my husband the same way. So I saw <laughs> myself right. in every single person. It's like they were my mirrors and my teachers. So you're and almost you're, you're almost like a, a, what they call an em, uh, an emp, a, emp, um what's that word emp, emp, an empath yes yeah. that that means that you're able to take on the feelings of other people and um, yeah. and how they feel guys if you're just tuning in I'm speaking with the great Lauren Hope and um, for more information because she's the founder of Moving On Theater uh, you can get more information go to movingontheater.co.uk or you can go to movingontv.uk. Lauren, uh, just refresh my audience real quick. Tell me what those two things are. Sorry? What, what things are? Sorry? Oh, uh, tell me about Moving On Theater and Moving On TV. Oh, of course. Just, just to refresh. Right. Moving On Theater is the theater company I formed when I came out of the community because I learned how to work with people and so I was able to form a theatre company where people came first. And I started to tour as Edith Piaf and Maria Callas, and I went all over the country 
and then I would stand up and talk about my recovery and the therapeutic community and how lucky I was. Um, Moving on TV is a TV station, very similar to what you're doing with World Most Amazing People. Mm -hmm. I believe that everyone is unique and deserves their story to be told. And because I couldn't get on the media, I thought I'll create my own, my own TV. <laughs> so, uh, but you see, the thing is, Casey, that it's all very well talking about all the great, all the great stuff that came from the therapeutic community. Because I have to be honest, because when you come out of the therapeutic community, you have to learn how to survive in this world. And the other day. Um, I was on my knees begging to stay sane because the world is insane. It's insane out there. Right. But but you had a challenge. You had a challenge, Lauren. Uh, You had to battle this uh, borderline, um, this borderline personality uh, disorder. disorder, Are we still in the month? Is it still? um, Or is that last month? It starts in May, Casey. May. Okay. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Um, I I, I mean, you're. Sorry, I need to talk about a few things because I am one of the lucky ones and I struggle. I struggle, but I've got a very, very strong support system that I've created around me. I've got my techniques that I use. I have a toolbox and sometimes I literally have to get on my knees and like the 12 steps, I have to hand it over to a higher power. Mm-hmm. You know, But there are people in this country with... BPD, borderline personality disorder, people I was in therapy with, and they are suffering so much you would not believe it because they were not able to do their work in the community. They came out unprepared. And there's nothing, Casey, there's nothing. There's there's no therapy. There's no benefit. It's just medication. They just want to jam medication. All they do is they throw loads of medication at everybody. Now, I, I won't take anything, and as I say, and but there's no work, and as I say, I'm so grateful to your station. I, I mean this from 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 my heart. You are the only person in the whole world that gives me an opportunity for my music to be heard, and for um, for me to talk about this amazing campaign of recovery, because there's nowhere the media in this country. All they want is celebrity. You have to be famous in order to get on. Well, uh, apparently they, they, uh, the, the people that you've been sending stuff to don't know what talent is. The what, sorry? Uh, apparently the people that you've been sending everything to or whatever, they don't know what talent is. And um, that's why you're on you because you're, you're so talented. <laughs> you. You're a great singer. Thank I told you. you about, I told you what happened in the deli. I mean, uh, yeah, that is so incredible. <laughs> I thought that was so cool. See, the, that is wonderful. But you see, the thing is that I got sick because of the frustration. Originally, I got sick because the frustration had built up. I've written so much music and I've written musicals and I've done so much. But because I was so sick, Casey, I didn't know what to do with it. Hmm. I couldn't focus. I couldn't create goals like I am now. I couldn't create a a plan. I couldn't work with people. So to me, I went into the therapeutic community. They gave me a toolbox, which maybe in in another interview, I'll go through the toolbox because it's so important. I mean, I can just say a few things. The most important thing to me with this condition is you have to be validated. And what what I mean by that, that's what the bell meant. When we were in the community, if you felt um, that you weren't coping, you'd ring the bell. You'd say, I can't cope, I can't cope. Hmm. But when you come out of the community, you've got to educate. If it, like I'm living with my husband, we've been together now 23, 24 years. Oh, congratulations. He has to understand. Thank you. July, the end of July will be... Um, 1994 we got married so 23 years 24 years together but it's you have to work at it and you have to he has to be educated in what this condition is and so he was i had to explain to him Mm -hmm. and if i go into a certain space you have to know how to talk to people you have to use something called stop think and listen because you have to listen to what that person is saying and you must validate that poor little child inside because 
one of the things that's happening, as I say, I'm giving you the worst case scenarios at the moment in England, mm-hmm. is um, I know someone who I've taken on their case for our local MP. And this person is so sick that she, they get arrested a lot because they get picked on. Oh my but God. because they go, the minute the police turn up, they, they go take their clothes off too, people. right? Exactly. Yeah. How did you know? Because you told me, you told me uh, last interview, you said that happens a lot with people who have um, uh, borderline personality they disorder. They take you don't think I listen? Off. How, how did I? How, they get arrested naked. Yeah, Casey. yeah, I know. You told Even. me that. Hey, I, I, Lauren, I, I, you you you, I, I, you had a. Uh, <laughs> hey, you had a phone call before, but I I can't take calls because, as always with you, I go over like fifteen minutes. Uh, but um, there was something I was saving for my guests. I mean, for my listeners, which I'm gonna I'm gonna save uh, till next interview. But if you can, Lauren. I would like, if you could, just to give a little tease. Um, I was going to ask Lauren to sing a cappella, just for just for yeah. a little while. <laughs> but but uh, next time, I'm going to ask her to sing the whole thing. But uh, Lauren, would you mind giving us maybe about 15, 20 seconds just to tease people? Definitely. Go ahead, you whenever see, you got um, it, go ahead. Je ne can you say it, no, can look, You, you know what, you're going to teach me that next time because that's, <laughs> that's funny in itself. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm going to do je ne because everyone knows it. They don't know who the PF is, but I'm going to do it a cappella for you, okay? Great. No, rien de rien. No, je ne regrette rien. Ni le bien qu'on m'a fait, ni le mal, tout ça m'est bien égal, et non, rien de rien. Yeah! Oh, je ne regrette rien. J'ai payé, balayé, oublié, je me fous du passé. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Hey, thank you. Lauren, thank you so thank much. You. Hey, guys, um, we're going to have her back, and we're going to uh, get right back in. She's always a blast. That's Lauren Hope, guys. Get more information. Go to movingontheater.co.uk or go to movingontv.uk. Lauren Hope, you're one of my favorites, and uh, you're a friend. Thank you, Casey. And I'm, looking, I'm looking at the moment for a PR first, and I'm sending that out. <laughs> Someone needs to take okay. all my work and get it out there. All right. It's out there. <laughs> it's out there. Hey, we'll, we'll look for someone to, uh, to, to help promote uh, Lauren Hope's music, and I don't think that should be so difficult. And my so, campaign. There it is. Yeah. Lauren, thank you so much. I'll be talking to you soon. Thank you so much, Casey. You take care, sweetheart. God bless you. Bye. Bye now. Guys, that was Lauren Hope. Plenty more coming up here on WMAP. I got Publisher's Corner coming up.